Victor Mushant. Okay. 2140. I've got the black bits. And what should we do? Should we go for... I don't know. What shall we go for? Um, I mean, the C6 lines are a bit more... A bit more principled here, but... Let's have some more fun. Why not? Let's adjust this slightly so you can actually get to see my my clock as well. Okay, let's do this. Hello, hope you guys had a good long Easter weekend. And I really don't really get weekends anymore, um, but I'm trying as much as I can to keep. I think it's healthy in these times to keep uh, everything reasonably um, going. Um, try and get as much of a routine as possible, otherwise you're just going to sort of fade into a position where you don't have any days of the week, and you don't really have any times of the day. And I mean, I miss my I miss my old routine really. Um, so I've tried as much as possible to keep to keep that going and having. Having meals at the right time, simple things like that, and even just like my work. So uh, I do uh, professional chess coaching, and I've tried as much as possible to keep my students on the same um, the same times, same days, so that you, know, you get up on a on a Wednesday like today, and you go, oh, well, I'm seeing John, or I'm seeing uh, whomever, and it's um, it's helped to keep me. As sane as it's possible to be, I think in these uh, in these pretty horrible times. This is going okay so far. He's got a very solid position. All the pawns are on the board. He hasn't made a decision yet. With um, there we go. There we go. It, so he has made a decision. Then now I've got to decide whether I want to take it and try and take the d file, or whether I want to plow on and just go for things. Mm. The reason I'm playing rapid is um, I'm trying to get my rating a little bit higher so that I can get some decent uh, opposition in, in these kind of in the 10 minute pool. Um, I guess all the, the top brass play shorter time controls at the moment, but had a nice little surprise yesterday where me playing in some of the English Chess Federation's official tournaments. Apparently I'm now number 18 in their online rating list, which is absolutely ridiculous. I'm about around the 200 mark, 220 mark for um, for proper chess in the country. So at number 18 is by no means reflective. But I suppose I've got a little, a little bit of an edge with online maybe. I don't know, but uh, yes. The weather's been ridiculous since we went into lockdown. It's just taunting us, isn't it? Really, I think we've had possibly one day of rain in um, the south of England here, where I'm broadcasting from or I'm, where I'm going to be for presumably many months to come um, what do we do here do we just play f5 straight away I think we do let's just keep going um, I'm very fortunate where I am at the moment and that I've got I'm in in the countryside and there's plenty of open space to go and socially uh, distance from Everybody else, we essentially just got got out of London when we could. Unfortunately, um, it was just never going to be enough room for for my family in a in our little flat. I suppose we we're lucky that we could have done that. Okay, so this this is interesting. We've got a nice little. Uh, Nice things going on with my queen here, um, down this diagonal, and 
plenty of time in which to work out what I want to do later. Do I want my rooks on the F and the E files? Do I want to play C4 at some point, try and get the C file? I definitely want to get the bishops off, I think. I'm not sure what other purpose my bishop has on the long diagonal, apart from to take the, uh, the other bishop and start clearing roots through to the king. Can I take that pawn? Is that the free pawn? Got three pieces looking at it. And I can. No, I can't, because rookie one. e3, bishop takes b7. Okay, so not. That is not a free pawn. But if I defend this guy first, then I might have a shot at doing something a little nasty later. So I'm now threatening to take that pawn, I believe. Gotta be careful of knight e6 as well. That might not be very happy. I've just got to take this. I don't think I've got much choice. And then I can take on f4 maybe after bishop takes. Bishop takes b7. No. Ah, maybe I have messed this up a bit. Okay, that, that did surprise me. Maybe now's the time for rook f4. But my queen... Uh, pawn takes, queen f5. No, maybe this is not the time. I think I'll just play knight f6, and then if knight e6 I can go king... g8? We can come in that way, can he? Okay. Still pull up, just try and keep control here. Yeah? Feels controlled. Sufficiently controlled. Okay, let's keep going. So we've got three pieces looking at the e pawn. I'm still a pawn up, and I can play maybe bishop e8, bishop a8 even, to defend that bishop and ensure that I can play e3 quite happily here. Can I play e3 quite happily? I think I can play e3 quite happily. All right, so we're a pawn up, and we've got it's quite a big extra pawn. Look at this lovely pawn chain, all the way from a3 to e3. How we finish it off? Well, actually, I think we can win a piece here, can't we? G5? That looks like it's all over. Okay, Keep playing on. I uh, just do need to be a bit careful, but I think if I hide my king on the F file, I should be absolutely fine. And then got rook G8. And now, I can continue to stop this rook coming in. Um, what's the best way of doing this? Is rook takes h3 too sexy? No, it's quite good, I think. I'll just grab another pawn, and that might be it. And that might be time to resign, Mr. Mutschiant. Mutschiant. Okay, a uh, rematch, yes, sure. Thank you. Let's keep going. Okay. Uh, should we play some E4? I haven't played E4 for a little while. We've got a pitch. Okay. Um, should we just... There's, a, there's an opening called the 150 attack, which basically Grandmasters used to beat up 150 rated players. Now 150, this is the English system that is about to be changed, but it's been the system since the, the 50s, I believe, um, where yeah, 150 is roughly equivalent to about 1800. And it was this opening is called the 150 attack simply because all these grandmasters used to enter weekend tournaments and beat up on 
1800 or 150 rated players in round one of these tournaments because they get them early. Now e5 isn't part of the 150 attack but I think we can still just castle here and get the d file and then we've got knight b5 or knight d5 bishop c4 and that bishop on g7 isn't looking too happy with life okay so yeah fair enough I'll just keep going is he gonna play a5 now I've got a4 I think but yeah the 150 attack was a it's very, it's very similar to the Grand Prix attack, which was named for the same reason. Uh, these tournaments, the weekend tournaments in England, uh, formed the Grand Prix, which used to have a prize fund of, I think, ten thousand pounds for the winner. It was a meaty prize fund, um, and it's now faded into a really an amateur event where I'm not even sure there is a prize for um, anyone over a certain level. That might not be true, but. It used to be that you'd have the overall Grand Prix and then the little graded sections below it. We'll stop that rook. Getting that uh, rook on a8, getting some squares. But where do I want my knight? Um, probably want it on c5, don't I? So let's get it there. Or do I want my bishop on c5? I think I'd rather have a knight there. I've still got to develop my king side. I've got to be careful not to leave too many holes in my queen side where my king side pieces, the rook and the knight that haven't moved yet, can't wouldn't be able to come over and do things. Okay, fair enough. Um Yeah, let's continue with the plan. I think the plan is good. So we'd either get the bishop pair or, or a knight to c5. And either of those things feels reasonable. Look at the quality of my dark square bishop compared to his. That's uh that cannot be bad. Okay, something's gonna happen here, either he's gonna take on D three. Possibility I could take with the pawn there, but I feel like the D file is more important. Okay, right, I've got this decision now. Do I take with the pawn and then just throw everything onto the C file to target that weak pawn? Or do I play rook takes? I am very tempted by pawn takes. Um, if rook takes then C5 but then that knight on f6 is pinned because the, it's defending the knight on d7 and you can't really do anything over there. Alright, we'll go with the rook, but I'll have a little look at the pawn takes afterwards because that, that felt like it might have been quite a reasonable try. And now we need to get the rest of our pieces going. So Okay, so c5 and then just c4. But then my bishop is completely stuffed. No, this is the moment to play bishop d5, I think. And then get a pass to pawn. Got to be careful of, yeah, all of this stuff is coming down the board. But if I can get c3 in, I feel like I'll be okay. Let's try this. This pass pawn is quite big. It just means that he can't really afford to swap anything off for the foreseeable. I'm going to double the rooks, but I can't. Let's try and grab more squares. Let's move this a bit closer towards me. I had a fun moment of reminiscence yesterday. I think that's important to to motivate yourself however you can in these uh, in these times. Yesterday I was listening to the Green Day album uh, American Idiot on my 
on my daily walk and brought back some really cool memories of um, going to see them live in Milton Keynes. It was the Milton Keynes Bowl, it's the Bullet in the Bible tour. It was, I think it was 80, 90,000 people at this, at this show. Just really, it's an amazing day. Um, my parents let me go, uh, despite having my, my school French exams the next day. But I suppose with languages, there's, there's not a lot you can do the weekend before an exam, because there isn't really anything to revise, it's just how well you know the language. Um, so they let me go to this all day gig with Green Day, Jimmy Eat Well, Taking Back Sunday and Hard Fight. I wasn't so bothered about Hard Fight, but Jimmy Eat World and Taking Back Sunday were unbelievably good supports. Let me just... Oh, hold on, I need to be careful here. You know, I'll play D7, I think. Rook D8 and then... Am I threatening Rook? Is Knight D5 just... No, hold on. This is quite technical now. What do I want to do? Do I want to play Rook D6 and just threaten Knight E6? Or Rook E6 if King E7? Because if Rook takes Pawn then I've got Rook takes Knight and I win a piece. But if Knight takes Pawn Ah, now I win. Now I win a piece this way. I've got this fork. But this isn't going to be easy because my king in this end game is tied down completely. If he maintains both rooks, and I might have some technical problems. Now, which rook do I want to take? With does it matter? Uh, yeah, I'd rather not have my, my that king looking at the other rook, so let's take it that way. Should be enough here. Got three active pieces and an exposed king. Uh, I do have one for your pawn, so I do need to be careful here. There's not much point in me playing aggressively without... Uh, Alright, so we just. I think we can just play this and then. No, I need to be. I still need to be very careful here because the, the problem I have is that. My king just can't get into the game, whereas his can. Do I want to just keep both rooks on and just because these rooks aren't really very active? The C file's not really going to open. If I have anything to do with that anyway. I got 100% in that French exam, by the way. So it was worth it. The gamble paid off, as sports commentators like to say. Just got a lovely little fork to win a pawn. And there's no access points for the rook down the D file after knight takes B4. I think this is over. Rook a5, I can probably just go munching on the queen, on the king side instead. I'm not sure we're remotely worried about this. Why do I want my king? Do I want it b2 or d2? Probably. Probably. d2. And then we're not really fussed about the pawn on a4 because we can just start munching on the king side. Okay, we've got another technical ending here, but hopefully I can just cut off the king. That seems sensible. And gradually march our king over to something like f3. Uh, yeah, I don't mind rooks coming off here. Hmm. 
Might even be able to trap the rook. It's not impossible. And then just pick up this pawn. Might be getting a resignation pretty soon. I think both of these pawns are going to fall in short order. That king is, black king is far too far away. Yep. Um, just save that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just next next step is not to allow any stalemates, but that king has plenty of squares, and I don't think that's going to happen today. There we go. One more, sir. He does want one more. Okay, good. Nice little series here against this gentleman. Should we play something slightly different, or I mean, the other the other line seemed, the other game seemed uh, pretty good in this line. Um, yeah, let's play the same thing. Let's see if he's got anything different in his locker. Now, I didn't take this pawn last time, but I think it's actually the better move. Last time I think I just castled and let him take some squares. Oh, did he leave? No, he left it for quite a while, actually. So, yeah, I think this is probably an improvement on the game one. Uh, do we just play e5 and screw that bishop into the ground? Get the d4 square. Okay, this seems like a reasonable opening for black. And we can start playing down the d file, maybe bishop h3 is coming as well. Maybe I'll play a bit more rapid because I actually have time to think and do what I'm talking about. I have time to talk about other things, things other than chess as well, I suppose, which is. Always a bonus. No one wants to hear me talking about how little time I have left on my clock because I've been talking too much. Okay, let's just continue to pin that knight on d2. That restricts the bishop on c1, which restricts the rook on a1. King side is very cramped. Uh, queen side is very cramped. What do we do with pin pieces? We put pressure on them. Quite how I do that here, I'm not sure. Can I play just g5 and g4? Is that completely ludicrous? It's risky. g5, knight f5, takes, takes... g4. That might just be completely ridiculous. But it looks fun. And we like fun. Um, e4 is also playable. That looks a bit better. Okay, let's try this. So if knight f5, we can take it and then play e4, I think. Or maybe we can't. Maybe we have to go g4 first. Oh, you can do this first, can you? How many pieces do I have around the king if I let my queen go? Um, probably not enough. Uh, that was careless. I take. Let's just do this and we'll see what happens. I think I've got some semi decent chances here. Should be an exciting game anyway. For me just throwing everything at his king. Take the I suppose that queen 
has a route into G5. This is what happens when you play the fruity lines. They turn out to be not... Okay, you've opened up the G-file for me. I guess you've developed your knight, but that might be useful later on. If we can get this bishop off, then all the light squares around the king aren't looking too happy. So what have we got? We've got a rook and a knight for a queen, which is normally not enough, but it does mean I have one more piece, I suppose. We're looking at it generously. Hmm. Got the luxury of being able to take a little bit of time here as well. Maybe I'm just in serious trouble here. I've got to play dynamically. Can't let anything settle here. How can I play dynamically? I've already got the default. This knight on c6 is doing nothing. Can I just take some squares here with c4? Or do I want to play my knight into c4? Let's take a couple more squares with c4. Try and supplant something on d3. Doesn't quite work me doing it with the rook at the moment, but we will work it out. That's a fun little games against this guy. If we can make it 3 and 0, oh, that would be lovely, but that's feeling unlikely at the moment after my little blunder earlier. Okay, so now he's blocked g5 from this queen, so I think I can start to threaten some things here. Got some nice little ideas to. If the pieces come off, then I've got chances. So we're now threatening rook d1, and that bishop is looking good on g4. So I've now translated it from a rook and a knight for a queen into a rook and a light square bishop, which is looking very like it has a lot of potential. I'm probably going to have to play bishop f8 next move after say bishop f6 otherwise I'm just going to get mated I'd get mated anyway after bishop f6 hold on uh, this isn't so going so well actually maybe I needed to play there aren't many moves here yeah this is a problem um, have I got time to run away run away I'm going to have to run away, I don't think I've got... Or, or can I play... Ah, can I play bishop f3 check and then... And then bishop b7? Right, bishop f3 and then... Or do we go rook... No, we can't go rook f3, queen g5 wins a piece. I can't go h5 because of queen h6, there's mates on g7 and h8. Do we have to run away here? I think we might have to. Run away! Keep running. Just worried about my knight on c6, it's doing very, very little. It's unclear I can bring it into the game. 
I might just have to be patient here. But I suppose the knight is looking at d8, which might be quite an important square to stop uh, the white queen coming to fairly soon. I can't play rook d2 yet because the queen's still looking at it. But I might be able to if he. Yeah, can I play rook d2 now? Is that completely ludicrous? Queen g8 would probably suffice that I've got to bring this bishop somewhere. Mm. Okay, I've got to defend the... But that knight's now going to come into f5. Uh, this is going to be over pretty soon. Unless I can wiggle. I've got enough minor pieces looking at the squares that the queen wants to come into eventually to survive for a little while here, I think. And I'm still... Got rook. Have I still got rook d2 here? And if he has to play knight h1, then that's a little victory I can claim. He did play knight h1, right? I can Everything's fairly solid around the king, actually, for now. I can play rook b takes b2, which should have the by the byproduct of uh, defending the b7 pawn. And that knight is marooned. Some chances, which is ludicrous. I don't deserve them. If I can play rook takes a2 and just march that a pawn very quickly, or just play, even play b5. No, I can't play b5, that would be stupid. I might make this into a daily thing where I play two or three rapid games, rapid games before lunch. Let's see how we get along each time. Um, Yes, this pawn is going to be very fast, isn't it? Do I have to bring my knight over? I might have to do this. If bishop f6, then my king... Again, my king just about sort of hides on the queen side if I, if bishop f6 happens now. Uh, now he's threatening to come into c7 instead, but are we that bothered? Everything else is protected. My bishop isn't protected on c5. Okay. Do we just play rook b5 and pray? Okay. That does allow the, the knight on h1 to come back into the game, but I'm making some chances here. And now his queen is over away from the pawn on h5, but I suppose that pawn can just run if it wants to. And it's going to be very hard for me to get any enough firepower over there quickly enough, you'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, we're still... Dead lost with that. Okay, this now. Is this really the best way to play? Giving me some temp tempo here to do things with. Alright, and then we can throw the rook over here. Is this so bad? Got a pass C pawn as well. Okay, they've now got a pass D pawn and a pass H pawn, but that I've got some possibilities here, haven't I? And as I said, I do not deserve them at all. Um, come and try grab this H pawn. That knight on H one is looking very precarious now. Um, yeah, that's a good way of getting the pawn with tempo. <sighs> Probably want my... Okay, I'm starting to lose the thread a little bit. And then... Yeah, d6 is quite a big threat. D6 now, looks quite strong. 
probably means I have to play f5. Otherwise, I'm going to get mated. I'm very satisfied with the way I've fought, though, because. Yeah, g5 is just obviously a completely ludicrous move earlier on, but. To give ourselves a chance, even at this late stage. It's been fun. I think what we'll do. That's. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, keep going. I think this might become a regular thing where I just do this every lunchtime. I've got five here. I'm starting to run away. He's got plenty of time left to make something happen with one of these pawns, you would imagine. Um... Okay, what do I play here? Because Queen G8 is coming. Uh, I want to play F4 first and then take on H4. Okay, so we take this with check. Hold on. Queen F1, Bishop B5. King G1. Oh my goodness. We're winning. We won. That's ridiculous. And the knight on h1 is completely stuffed. I'm threatening f3 and rook b1 mate. Um, I think we just have the knight. This is what happens. Just keep fighting. Keep frustrating and you might win 3-0. Thank you, Mr. Mouchat. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you again tomorrow probably.